Hey everyone, I'm Kyron and I'm the creator of this pack and in this video I'll try and demonstrate in different ways of how the assets can be used. In the cheat sheet you'll find all the assets that I have inside the pack labeled and sectioned off. So you have section 1, A1, A2, A3 all the way down till A38 and it's the same for section 2 a1, A2, A3, and it goes all the way down till section 7. On the left, we've got the folders marked section 1 down to section 7. All the folders contain PNGs and SVG files. So here we have them labeled as they are in the cheat sheet. So section 1 would be S1. And A1, that corresponds to that one. If I go to section 2, I can go back to section 2, PNGs, and I have section 2, A1, and that goes all the way down to section 2, H15, which is the same as section 2, H15. That applies the exact same way for the SVG files, so we can find the same ones that we're looking for if you use a cheat sheet. Here we've got the Illustrator file open, which is exactly the same layout as the cheat sheet, but we also have the options for selecting them by clicking on whichever one that we want. Um, we can also access them via the layer, the layer panel, and they all have the names corresponding to whichever item that they are as well. So all the assets created are created as symbols. So if you go to your symbols panel, and you'll find yours may appear to be as a thumbnail so I have them all in your symbols panel and they're all labeled as S1 A so that's your section 1 and all the A assets and section 2 and A assets all the way down to the very end which is section 7 uh, I tend to have it more as a large list view so it's a bit more easy for me to find, or it looks a bit more organized at least. And if you go all the way down, we go through all of them. At this point, I have nested symbols, which are, these will be symbols within symbols. So uh, section two, C3, A. So if I go to section two, C3, that would be that one. And this would also be a symbol as well as this one. So these two are exactly the same symbols. So any change I make to this will affect that one as well. So we've got both the same. All of these below, they're all part of whatever name they're specified as. Given that they're all symbols, uh, I have come across a minor bug. It happens for me anyway, every time I open my Illustrator file. This particular asset, uh, section 2A13, that tends to extend way outside of my onboard for some reason. Um, it happens with that one, it happens with A26, and it also happens with section 2, G2. So for some reason that happens, I don't know why. If anyone knows, please let me know. But the way I fix them is to literally just double click it and double click out and that's fixed. So if I do that for all three of them, and that one, the last one, then that will actually fix the problem. Say you're working on your own project and you want to include these assets as part of yours. Um, there are two main ways that I tend to use to do that. And one is to have this document open alongside the one that you're working on and copy and paste it into yours. But given that they're symbols, if I were to, let's say, copy that one, if I copy and paste it into this, uh, this is literally just a rectangle with a gradient on, with a bunch of points on. Um, but I've just copied the symbol into this document. And I can pop you on there. And let's say I extend this out. Then I've got some form of a pipe or something. But given that it is a symbol, it does add to the symbols panel in this document as well. So any duplications of that one that I do will actually 
uh, adjust both of them. So if I now want to adjust this one and bring that back, it's going to happen for this one as well. So it's just something to look out for. If you don't want that to happen, there's two ways I think you can do that for now. One would be to select that and either click here, this would break the link to the symbol, so it no longer remains as a symbol, it's now just a shape. Um, I just undid that, sorry. And Or you can click on it and break it to symbol there. That's two ways of breaking the link. The other way, so I've just deleted that, would be to go into the symbol from here, then select everything and copy the shapes within the symbol. And you can paste it in that way. And now you've pasted the shapes and not the symbol. So you won't actually get, if I delete that, nothing happens. So you just got the shape there now. And you can duplicate it and make any alterations to it that you want to. And uh, you'll be fine. So the other way that I tend to add the assets to my current projects is to add them in my symbol uh, library. So if you open your project and you open your symbols tab uh, under this little button here, you can click that and click other library. And if you browse to where you've got that illustrator file, if you browse to that and you just select that one, so I've got there, so I'll double click there and it will give me a separate panel containing all these symbols. So from here now I can literally just drop stuff in if I want to do it that way. Um, or go back to this again and set large view so I have a better uh, browsing system. Again, you can just, just add stuff to it that way. Now, so you do want to customize one of the assets that you have to be a bit more unique to the project that you're working on. Say we grab this one because it's nice and simple enough with enough curves to demonstrate. Um, so I've pasted this one into the new document and it's remain as a symbol. Um, I'll double click to enter the symbol and you can see that it's made out of two particular pieces but within this it's grouped so I can double click again to enter that group and there's more pieces that this one is actually made out of. Um, this top piece if I open my gradients you can see that this is the structure of the gradient so I can alter stuff by uh, moving things around that way and I'll undo that. And it's the same for this one. So it's just a gradient from black to transparent, which gives the illusion of that curvature. Um, so in order for me to manipulate this, um, I use a direct selection tool. And I'll drag the entire thing, I'll select the entire thing at the top, and drag that up and down with ho while holding shift to constrain along the y-axis, so up and down. Um, it would be the same for the bottom. Um, I can do that for down here as well. Let's say I grab this piece, I can drag that out, I can drag this one out further. If I move that out of the way, I can drag that as far as I want to, or maybe even just this piece. So there's quite a bit you can do if you need to uh, manipulate things around to suit what it is you're looking for. That's pretty much how you customize. Um, all the assets that's here. Some are more complicated, some are simpler, but the concept is exactly the same for all of them. Now, a quick tip on how I get the curvatures to be the way they are is if I were to grab a rectangle, for example, and just pull that in. If I grab the top two points, not the extended ones, just the top two, I'll copy and paste in front. So Command or Control F for front. And if I, that gives me a shape like that exactly over top of the one. And if I open the swatches that's already made in the mechanical pack, and it has this gradient there built. So if I select that, hit G on the keyboard and drag it down to that point. That gives me the, that little curvature, but set it to multiply or maybe even overlay, whichever look you're looking for. I'll have multiply particularly. That gives me that kind of a curved look to the um, piece. Then if I go back to there and I select the entire the entire rectangle and select one of these, whichever one you prefer, that will also give a curvature to that piece. And I can do the same thing for the bottom. Control F, Command F, and uh, do the same thing for you. So I'll grab you. 
j and pull you up set you to multiply and that gives me that kind of a curved look so all the pieces in the assets are pretty much drag and drop pieces that you can then further manipulate to fit something a bit more unique to you but what I do want to show you is at the very end in section 7 so from 25 onwards these particular pipes let's say I grab that one and paste you in here if I grab the direct selection tool I can pull this out to be a lot further than it actually is so out or in whichever way you want to go but if you wanted to curve further I'll delete that for now um, select that piece that point and with the, the pen tool if you click there and then click away you can add an additional amount of sections but selecting these points as well you can curve them in and it will give you more curvatures now to get this back on i'll hold alt and drag this out which duplicates that piece i can just duplicate it back into the section at the end and that's how i manipulate these pipes I hope that you find this pack to be really useful. I hope that it saves you a lot of time in creating your own pieces. And if there's anything that I've missed, please let me know, send me an email or comment below. Thanks again for checking this out and hope you guys have a great day.